Welcome to The Topic on HCC TV. I'm Todd Duplantis. Thanks for joining us today. If you're watching us on the cable channel, we encourage you to find us in social media. You can find us under Houston Community College District. Follow us on Facebook and, of course, on Twitter. Most importantly, jump on over to our YouTube channel. You can watch all of our programming. Subscribe to the channel. You'll get notifications when shows like this are recently posted. And if you like podcasts, you can download all the audio versions of our show. Listen to them at your convenience by going to hccs.edu slash podcast. All right, let's get started for today. HCC provides learning opportunities for students of all ages, including high school students. Today, we're joined by Dr. Catherine O'Brien, HCC Associate Vice Chancellor of College Readiness and representatives of three of our partnering area school districts. First up is Dr. Scott Godley, HISD Senior Manager of Post-Secondary Programming. Welcome to you both. Thanks for being here. Dr. O'Brien, I want to start with you. I imagine reaching out to all the, there's a number of school districts within HCC's range. Keeping in communication with them all seems like it would be key to establishing and working on these partnerships. Absolutely. Uh, we could not do the work that we do. We could not serve the students we serve if we did not have that communication. And we achieve that in many ways. Um, there's a lot of uh, direct, um, there's an ISD counterpoint for an HCC person. And so those individuals will speak frequently. Our P16 team is in the schools and communicating with the school districts daily. We hold um, events. We're doing a big event for our middle school and high school counselors uh, to bring them into the mix. That's going to happen at the end of April. Um, we bring together on an annual basis a dual credit rigor institute. Last year we had around 300 participants. That's another way for us to have very open cross-functional communication take place. Um, and we meet with individual principals. We, we meet with um, assistant principals. And we, we really overall have a very strong district level connection with our school district partners. And we could not do it without all of the effort that people put forth into creating these smooth relationships. Dr. Godley, I want to bring you into the conversation. I imagine with, a, with Houston ISD's uh, strategic plan, there are plans of not only getting the students through school, but into some type of secondary education. How important is it to start when they're very young, uh, you know, going into high school, to start thinking about making plans to attend a college somewhere, whether it's HCC or anywhere? Well, that's a good question. Um, it is extremely important because what we find with a lot of students is the elements of a college course that they do not see very often in a high school course where you have maybe long gaps between assignments being due. So you really have to manage your time effectively. Uh, the professional communication component that comes into play, talking to an adult who is not associate, who you just don't have that familiarity with. You see maybe twice a week based on how your course is scheduled and just knowing how to communicate your needs to that individual um, so that you are on top of the work that you need to be on top of uh, as a dual credit student. That's just two examples of uh, things that we find to be really beneficial for our students, whether they're taking an English course or a welding course uh, through HCC. I know now things have really changed in uh, the college world. When I was going to college, you went to uh, community college when you really didn't know what else to do and you didn't have plans or you weren't really sure where you were going to go. But now there are so many workforce programs where students can get in in a, in a short amount of time, get a certification and move out. And then you also have the dual credit programs where they can earn part of their degree while they're attending Houston ISD. This must work out very well for a lot of students and their families. Definitely. You know, we have really tried to take advantage of those opportunities when available to offer the workforce classes in addition to academic. Uh, we currently have active or uh, new you know, CTE or workforce dual credit programs at 19 high schools. That's more than half of the uh, high schools within HISD that offer dual credit. So, and, and oftentimes these uh, workforce programs are tied to significant partnerships. We have a Merrick partnership that is tied to two high schools, Austin and Milby, that includes an internship that can transition into a full-time uh, employment opportunity down the road. So these aren't necessarily just, uh, I think Todd, to your point, 
you know, classes that you take to just maybe like wood shop or things like that back in the days that you're just like, let me just dabble in this and see what it looks like. There's a lot that goes into them, the rigor. And that's why, you know, really when we look in ter as a school district, these classes are weighted on the same level as an AP or a dual credit course when mm -hmm. it comes to the student's high school GPA. That's how we, you know, significantly we can consider them. And the last thing I'll say is just with the academic classes, uh, I was maybe, I think on the back end, not to date myself, but when tuition really started to skyrocket, you know, it was really fixed for a while there with a lot of public yeah. and state for your schools. And that since then, as you all know, that has changed. And so that makes it uh, extremely imperative and important for these students to get as many credits under their belt. That's for sure. I know when, uh, unless you're going to a community college like HCC, where it's very affordable, you go off to, when I went to college at, let's, I'm just going to say U of H, um, I could actually work full time a semester and wind up paying most of my classes. Now that's an impossible task for a lot of students. And Dr. O'Brien, this dual credit thing is really a lifesaver um, because you can get for, you know, classes for free towards your degree. That could save families tens of thousands of dollars. Absolutely. Um, you know, we waive all tuition and fees for students who reside within our uh, taxing district area. And then it's a very minimal cost for those students who are out of district, they pay $65 a course. So they're getting a real deal on these courses. And of course, um, all early college, high school, P-TECH students, there is no charge to those students, whether they're in district or out of district, they receive that education for free. Um, and, and so the cost savings is tremendous. You know, when, right. uh, when a student graduates from high school to have so many credits or even best case scenario, they have a degree, look at how much time and money they've saved. Absolutely. Dr. God Godley, I wanna ask you this, um, with the pandemic and the fact that uh, for a good portion of last year, all of us were working remotely, classes were being taken remotely. And here's what I saw with a lot of major universities and colleges. Students went off to school, the parents had to go get them, they had to bring them back home, they were learning online, still paying that full college tuition, and then they'd go back and then some schools were closing again. Are you finding that some parents now, more than usual, are opting to keep the kids close at home as opposed to sending them to an Austin or College Station where another thing could, could close the campuses down? Have you found that at all? As a district, we've definitely, the numbers have shown that that especially the, the older students, and I don't know if this, uh, you know, they're the need to take care of some of their younger siblings comes into play. But when you look at, at least for this school year, the number of students that have returned to campus, the numbers are much smaller. I wanna say the average is around 35% of our students, our high school age students are in person this year and the numbers grow in middle school and then they're even higher at elementary. But yeah, I, for this year, we have definitely been a, a very much a virtual district with the majority of our students staying remote. And I think a lot of that goes to needs that they have at the campus level. And, and also just, you know, we work with a lot of, um, you know, communities and, and parts of the Houston area, underserved communities that really have, have a lot of challenges. So we know that probably also plays into some of the decision making. Dr. Godley, I know we're going to have to move on, but real quickly, if someone's interested in the dual credit program, their kid attends Houston ISD. How do they get started with this? Good question. Well, we encourage everybody to go to HoustonISD.org slash dual credit. Very simple. It's just our homepage and then dual credit extension. And what we've done on that website is we've provided contact information. We have provided a breakdown of each campus and what they offer at those campuses, what they've offered this past school year. And then also we have provided a, uh, every, each one, each campus has a dual credit leader and then a district level support. So you can find those individuals' names and email information as well. Dr. Godley, thanks for being here on the show and bringing us up to date with Houston. Houston ISD and your efforts and your partnership with HCC. Dr. O'Brien, stick around. We're going to take a short break. When we return on the topic, we'll be talking about how Fort Bend ISD is partnering with us. Stay tuned. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes, sorry color coding listings, ticking boxes, 
and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunter. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. 150 over 90. 180 over 111. 160 over 110. I had a stroke. Your blood pressure numbers could change your life. Lowering them could save you from having a stroke. If you've stopped your treatment plan, restart it, or talk to your doctor about creating one that works better for you. Start taking the right steps at manageyourbp.org. Now I'm, you know, trying to get better, stronger than ever. The faculty at HCC represents the best of the city. They're committed to getting our students to their goals. A four-year degree. Workforce training. A better life. HCC, for everyone, anytime, any way. Welcome back to The Topic. I'm Todd Duplantis. If you're watching us on HCC TV, follow us in social media. Look for Houston Community College District on Facebook, Twitter, all social media platforms. Most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Same thing, Houston Community College District. Hit the subscription button and you can get notifications when shows like this are posted. As always, we offer audio podcasts of all of our programming. It's located where you can download it at hccs.edu slash podcast. Welcome back. We are discussing today about our dual credit program and the opportunities that we offer with partnering school districts around the Houston area. Of course, we're joined now by Dr. Catherine O'Brien, HCC Associate Vice Chancellor of College Readiness, and also Jennifer Chadwick, Fort Bend ISD's Assistant Director of College, Career, and Military Readiness. Jennifer, I want to start with you. Thank you for being here on the show. Um, I want to talk to you about the commitment that Fort Bend County has towards dual credit. We heard a lot with Houston ISD. What type of things as Fort Bend facing that our viewers may not know where dual credit may, may play a big role or is in very important to your students and their families. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, we as a district have always basically wanted to equip and inspire our kids to reach beyond their imagination and their goals. And for us, dual credit is a huge part of that. We just started, we're in our second year of our two P-TECH campuses and our, in our early college campus so that we can make sure we're extending our dual credit program across the district. So at every high school, students have the opportunity to take their dual credit courses. And at these three specific campuses, they have that opportunity for an associate's degree, which is new for Fort Bend, um, but one that we are striving to make sure that our kids have the option for, especially those first generation kids that may not have ever thought of going to college um, or they know they don't have the money right. to, to go. So we want to make sure in our partnership with HCC and just like HISD that we are offering all of those opportunities to every student in our district. And Dr. O'Brien, some people may be watching and thinking, well, wait a second, Houston Community College, but they're Fort Bend County, but our service area stretches into Fort Bend County. Talk about how um, we are offering our dual credit courses to Fort Bend County and how that works. HCC has a piece of the service area in Fort Bend County, um, in Fort Bend ISD. And so we have certain schools where the majority of the students are considered to be in district. Um, but when we uh, originally created the MOU, uh, it expanded out to the other schools because we wanted to offer that opportunity for other students. And with the, uh, the low amount to be paid, it was an incentive. And so we're working very closely with them. My, my hope is that we are able to expand more into workforce areas uh, to gain additional completions for students before they graduate from high school. And so uh, the P-TECH schools get us started in that direction. Um, I have high hopes for the P-TECH schools and the early college high school, but we service the entire Fort Bend School District um, as part of the Southwest College Service Area. Jennifer, I want to ask you for people who are watching, they hear the term P-TECH, but they're not familiar with that. Maybe you can explain what a P-TECH campus is. So we have two, and it stands for Pathways in Technology. And so, for instance, our two focus on computer programming at Willow Ridge High School, and then our medical sciences at Hightower, where they can earn certifications in histology, 
so the study of blood labs, and uh, at the health informatics. So if they're computer-based and they want to work in the medical field from that aspect, we give them that opportunity. And, and then they're also able to graduate, like Dr. Brian was saying, with those certifications uh, in industry so that they can go out. And it's the same with our program at Willow Ridge, the computer programming. So students that are interested in Java and C++, um, Oracle, all of those things, they can get those certifications and their associate's degree along with it and internships as well for both of those campuses. I know Houston Community College has an early college high school at uh, our Southwest College, but maybe you can explain what the early college high school is, Dr. O'Brien. It's an early college high school program um, targets um, students who have typical barriers to get into college classes. We look at um, economically disadvantaged students, um, underrepresented uh, populations, and they go in as a cohort. So when they start in ninth grade, they are set on a cohort of classes that enables them by the time they're at their end of their senior year to graduate with an associate's degree. And the cohort model works well. Students have a group to lean on. Uh, we find that we graduate, I, I think this spring we're going to be graduating around 840 high school students with a degree or credential um, in our service area, which is remarkable. They. Um, they have additional supports at the early, early college high school level. Um, and we are uh, having regular meetings with the principals of those particular schools. Jennifer, what's been the interest in the uh, community in Fort Bend County for students getting into these early college high school and also the PTAC campuses as well? We have a very high interest from our community. Um, Clear Cross, I mean, if you've been in Fort Bend, you know that it can take you 45 minutes to get from one end of the district to the other. Uh, and so with that, we you know offer free transportation. So if a student at one end of the district wants to attend one of these programs, that it's there. We have a heavy recruiting. Uh, we have deans at each campus that literally go out to every single middle school um, and recruit with our eighth graders. We have partnerships with our zoned campuses that start in the sixth grade to get those kids interested and ready for the options that we have available to them um, once they become eighth graders to go in. And so the community has embraced it. It's something they've wanted for a very long time, uh, the, those opportunities for our kids. And, and that's what we've stri strived for and that's what we're giving them. We wanna give every kid that opportunity. And so we have hundreds and hundreds of kids apply each year uh, into our programs. And Jennifer, let me ask you this. Um, for you mentioned the cost earlier are more parents open now to wanting to send their children to a two-year school before or even if they want to go on for a four-year degree and do they look at workforce programs differently than we did many years ago oh, yeah. oh yes we we definitely do um, and with and i know kathy had mentioned or dr brian had mentioned the you know bringing it out to all of our campuses even if they're not in the h uh, CC zone, um, the district pays for those students to take these classes. So there's literally no cost um, to our kids as far as courses go uh, for the course cost itself. And so we, you know, made that in there. And then looking at the technology aspect and those career focuses, you know, the parents are understanding that my child can go out into the workforce at 18. Right. Um, and, and some of the children as well that, you know, they, they work to help their families. And they understand that, wow, I can use this to help better my family um, as well. And then, you know, with our Reese Center too, we, we have those opportunities to get those level certifications. So it's, it's a booming, it's booming. I mean, they, they know what they want to do. Not every kid wants to go to college. They may want to do industry. And so we need to be able to give them those options. Jennifer, thanks for joining us and bringing us up to date with Fort Bend ISD and your partnership with HCC. Dr. O'Brien, stick around because next on the topic, we're going to be reaching out to our partners in Stafford. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. But now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah, 
Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I oh, do. Easy. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. This is a serious problem, but one we can solve. Visit feedingamerica.org to help. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. Welcome to HTC. Let me teach you. Let me help you get college credits. Let me train you for a new career. Let me change your life. Come learn with us. HCC, for everyone, anytime, any way. Welcome back to the topic on HCC TV. Todd Duplantis here, and we are talking to some guests today about our dual partner, dual credit partnership with several school districts around the Houston area. We've got uh, two guests joining us right now. Of course, Dr. Catherine O'Brien, HCC Associate Vice Chancellor of College Readiness is here. We're also joined now from Stafford MSD, Deborah North, the Director of College and Career Education. Welcome to you both again. Deborah, thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Todd. I'm glad to be here. Just a question for you. You mentioned earlier you're on one of your campuses. Um, did you how long were your students out studying remotely for Stafford MSD, and have all of them returned now? We were out all um, pretty much for a whole calendar year. In fact, we just celebrated the year universe or the year um, the years anniversary right. Uh, right before spring break. We went out last year on spring break and didn't come back. So we were excited to be back after spring break. Um, we are starting to transition our students back on campus now. Uh, we're encouraging all of the students um, to come back face to face as, as much as possible. Starting on uh, April 5th, we've got state testing coming up, and it's important that we get a, a good gauge of where our students are academically. Did you find during the pandemic that a lot more students were more willing to maybe get involved with what, maybe a dual credit program, uh, being that they were studying remotely? Did that play any role, or did you notice any rise or, or dip in the numbers? No, not necessarily. Uh, we've since we've started our dual credit program eight years ago, um, Dr. Bostic was very instrumental in um, ensuring, along with Dr. O'Brien and HCC, that that partnership is very strong. And um, our community has embraced it. And when, when I first started on the campus uh, eight years ago, uh, we had two dual credit classes, one English class, one math class. Now we have 11 embedded instructors and uh, over 350 students enrolled in one or more dual credit classes. We graduated our first group of three students last year with an associate's degree. We've got nine more coming on board to graduate in the next six weeks, if you can believe. Um, and we're recruiting our um, eighth graders right now for the class of 2025 for the early college high school. So it is just uh, an expanding uh, program. And so there really wasn't any, any downside to the Ooh. pandemic. They just picked up, adjusted, and went on. And Dr. O'Brien, I know uh, HCC's had a long um, relationship with Stafford uh, MSD, uh, mainly because of the, the former mayor, you know, Mayor Leonard Scarcella. We've had a relationship for him for decades, and he was very instrumental in getting HCC started out in that area. Um, that must really uh, build on a relationship that we've had with uh, the school district. Sure, absolutely. And, you know, the, the groundwork was there. Uh, and then when we were able to get together, and I remember it back from six years ago when I first came to HCC and learned about some of the uh, difficulties that we were having and how limited we were in the programs that we were offering, uh, Debbie jumped right in with me and I'd known Debbie, I've known Debbie for years and years now. Uh, it's been quite a while. I worked with her at Fort Bend ISD at one point. Uh, 
but jumped right in and saying, where are the opportunities? We want to provide these opportunities and let's build on the successes that we're having. And it really was through the lens of innovative thought processes, you know, that with this can do attitude, if there is a barrier that we come up against, we always were able to figure out a way to remove that barrier and move the agenda forward. And now we're seeing Stafford with tremendous opportunities for their students. It's really, uh, Stafford is a gem of a school district. Deborah, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys have a very strong commitment to workforce programs with things that are actually in your high schools currently, correct? Yes, actually the, the vision for the College and Career Center initially, which um, was developed back in 2011, uh, was uh, centered around those workforce classes. And um, it wasn't until we started playing, Dr. O'Brien and I started playing What If, um, did we realize that we could build dual credit programs, college credit programs around our workforce programs as well. That's initially how we expanded dual credit and got the kids interested in earning college credits was through our workforce programs. And we have 12 uh, workforce programs currently, and six of those have pathways for earning level one or level two certificates, which also comes with 18, up to 18 to 24 hours of college credit. So at that point, they can stop um, and, and go right on into industry and go in at not that entry level, but they go in above entry level because they, they have college, they have college credit, and they have their industry cer certifications. So um, they can make good livings yeah. with those two pieces of, you know, those two credentials, or they can take that and eventually turn that into an associate's degree and have a two-year college degree. So mm -hmm. uh, we're very proud of our relationship with HCC with our workforce courses. And um, it took some, it took some, problem solving, but uh, Dr. O'Brien is a force to be reckoned with, and she was able to uh, help us build out those pathways, and, and our kids are the ones that are benefiting from it. Deborah, I know when I first started with uh, the Southwest College, it was back in uh, 2012, and manufacturing was the big thing out in the Stafford area. It was known for booming with manufacturing industries and locations. Um, you've got one, several of them right across the street from our campus and your, and your locations there as well. Did that play a big role in how you wanted to establish the dual credit program and especially the workforce programs to maybe focal, focus on local industry? Absolutely. Because as you, as you noticed, uh, or you mentioned, Hunting Energy is right across the street from us. And um, they were the first ones that said, hey, we need welders. And we need uh, folks that, that know their way around a welding machine. Um, and so actually our welding program was our first program that we uh, initially brought on board. And, um, and it's been very successful. Mm -hmm. um, we graduate our senior classes every year. Every one of them graduate as certified welders, ASD, ASW certified welders. And um, they go to work almost immediately and they make a lot of money. Welders make a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, they, uh, they make a very good about, living. Absolutely. You think about an 18 year old who comes out of high school ready to go into workforce and um, they can make a very good living for themselves as an 18 year old. So absolutely. And currently we have uh, graduates at Huntington or at Hunting Energy. Uh, working in their uh, manufacturing department. Incredible. Great partnerships uh, that we've established. I want to thank you for being here on the show. Deborah North, Director of College and Career Education for Stafford MSD, and also Dr. Catherine O'Brien, HCC Associate Vice Chancellor of College Readiness. Thank you for talking about these programs offered by HCC today. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. And we're going to wrap up this week's show. I'm Todd Duplantis. We'll see you next time right here on The Top.